All right, what is up, my peeps? Joshua Smithy with another GSD Mode podcast, Real Estate Tip. And today I'm here to talk to you about how and when to follow up with your real estate leads to go out there and maximize conversions, right? So, so many people reach out to me and say, oh, you know, I have a problem with lead generation. I get that. I understand that. We need to go out there and be able to have opportunities and, and generate the leads. But as I peel back those onion layers, the vast majority of the time, now they might have a lead generation problem, but the vast majority of the time, the deeper core issue is their inability to convert those leads into appointments at the highest possible level. So that's what I want to break down here today is, okay, as you're getting these leads, when these leads are coming in, and this is going to be, hey, whether you're whether you're doing marketing, like inbound style lead generation marketing, or whether you're doing outbound kind of prospecting. So you know, whether I'm getting Facebook leads, Zillow leads, YouTube leads, whatever the inbound strategy that you're doing, or whether you're doing open houses, or whether you're going out there and hitting phone prospecting, calling expires, calling FISBOs, um, going after notice of defaults, you know, all these different effective things. Everything works and nothing doesn't. Yeah, you know, but we gotta know, you know, how do we follow up effectively? You know, what 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 is the goal and the objective of that initial call? Then from there, every follow-up call, you know, uh, to go out there and again, convert at the highest level, which is going like, why is this important? Because at the end of the day, we got to set appointments so we can go out there and generate clients, generate closings. And look, the vast majority of people, you know, if you look at any, any, any general area, you know, if we look at just kind of a general rule of thumb, if you look at, you know, the adult population in any given area, usually have between three and 5%, <clears throat> you know, of that adult population that's moving on a 12 to 18 month time frame. So the vast majority of people that live in your area, you know, yeah, they're going to buy and sell at some point in the future, you know, um, but it may not be right now. So if you're just trying to go after the now business, you're looking at the lowest hanging fruit. And you're missing out on that other 97%. Now, I want the low-hanging fruit too, man. I'm going after like the people that are hot to trot right now. I want those people too. And I'm not trying to discourage you from going after those by any means. I want those people too. Yeah, right. But I want those people. But in addition to that, I want to make sure that I've got, you know, I'm playing the long game. I got the long follow-up strategy, you know, and so forth. And 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 so today here we're talking about again. How do you follow up effectively, especially when it comes to the phones, right? Because appointments get set on the phones. Now I'm using, you know, automation a lot in my business, you know, so I put every, you know, pretty much every lead source that comes in that I'm not able to get them as a client immediately, right? So they're still a lead. It's going to go, yeah, on a thousand day email text trip campaign. They get five and a half mass emails on average a month from me. Um, uh, you know, then from there, you know, if they're a buyer, they're going to be on, you know, daily property alerts and, you know, so they're not going two or three days without hearing from me, you know, from the, the, you know, automation or the, the mass email stuff, all the easy stuff to do. But if you just rely on that alone, you're going to have low conversion rates. Appointments get set on the phone with any high ticket product that you are selling. And you and I, we are selling the highest ticket item out there. And I can, guys, like, I can just promise you this, man, when you are, so I've got a supplement company, right? So this right here is an $80 supplement, $79 supplement, right? So this is for, you know, mental energy, you know, focus, you know, having that, that minute, you know, it's a memory energy and focus. It's a, you know, it's a nootropic, right? Um, well, this is a $79 supplement for a month supply. Okay. I don't need to get on the phones to sell that. I can do online photo, you know, funnels and automation and boom, that's it. But when people are buying the biggest or buying or selling the you know, biggest financial investment of their lifetimes, I mean, what's bigger than real estate? Yachts, planes. I don't know about you, but I'm guessing that most like my clientele, the vast majority of my clientele are not out there buying planes and yachts, I'm guessing yours aren't either. You know, so for our clientele, we are then helping them buy and sell the biggest financial transactions of their lifetimes. The higher the ticket item, the more important phones and face-to-face, -face, you know, selling becomes, right? So I get it. I know everybody wants to automate the shit out of their business. I get that. People don't want to, you know, do the phones and are afraid of the phones, you know, um, but we got to get on the phones. But then from there, why are you afraid of the phones? Why are people afraid of the phones? The analogy I always give is like, look, I'm a terrible dancer. I've never invested the time to go out there and learn how to dance. So I don't know if we're at a wedding, you know, or like out at a bar or something. I don't drink or go to bars, but you know, um, um, like back in the day, or whatever. Okay, when people get up and start dancing, or my wife wants to go at a wedding, go out there and start dancing. Look, I'm un I don't want to do it. I'm uncomfortable with it. I look like a fucking idiot out there doing it, right? Because I've never invested the time to go out there and learn how to dance, unless I'm just sloshed and who cares? Then you know, right? But but normally, 
you know, right? Like I, I don't want to go out there and do that thing. It's uncomfortable for me. However, if I invested the time to go out there and get good at that thing, okay, well, I'd probably then go out there and enjoy it and do it because now I'm good at it and I don't feel like I'm an idiot at it, right? So a lot of people, it's really not that they're so afraid of the phones. It's just, or, or if they have really have a problem, you know, with, with having, because it's not just, dude, it, it's a phone is just the vehicle for you to have a conversation, right? So we're, now we're talking about conversations. A lot of people are afraid of those conversations because they don't know, you know, what to, what to do. They don't know, you know, they're not good at it. They don't know what to do, what to say, when to say it, how to say it, how to navigate those conversations. Because I promise you, if you get damn good at this, like then from there, you start to enjoy it. Like I, 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 mean, I love hitting the you know, calls and having sales calls and doing all that stuff because I'm good at it. My conversions are high and I go out there and I win and it's exciting, right? So, you know, these are all things, you know, that we develop that, those skill sets and I'll, we'll get you good at this, right? Um, so with that being said, because I don't care if you're doing inbound or outbound, I'm not saying that you got to go through and circle prospect. I wouldn't recommend that in this market anyway, at least as of me creating this video here on December 2nd, 2023, I would not recommend circle prospect. It's the lowest return on your time and your effort and your energy with the lowest conversions. And you're just going to exhaust a bunch of time. I'd be a little bit more laser target, like going after expireds, FISBOs, notice defaults, you know, um, I'm going after investors that, that are, are feeling the pain and need to sell in this market. Like be very strategic with these, where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck and get the highest conversions. But whether you're doing phone prospecting like that, you know, quote unquote, cold calling, you know, or you're doing inbound follow calls, right? So it, like, dude, like, okay, go out there and generate all the Facebook ads that you want to generate. But dude, like if you are just praying and hoping that these people are just going to magically slide in your DMs and say, I want to go out there and buy, not saying it's not going to happen from time to time, but you're, you're, you're going to be like, you're going to exhaust a bunch of money. You're going to lose a bunch of money, lose a bunch of time. You're just going after the lowest hanging fruit and you are going to struggle. If you do not get good with the follow-up game, whether it's inbound, outbound, you are going to struggle. All right. So with that being said, we're going to jump down here into, okay, what to do with these calls. So we're going to talk about that initial call and what the frequency, I recommend what the frequency is on that initial call. Then we're going to talk about every follow-up call after that. And then based on their timeline, when you should be calling, then I'm going to talk about how to set up your CRM to keep this stuff together. Because if you're not using a CRM, it's very difficult to go out there and do this stuff and do this at a high level and convert at a very high level. This is why your CRM is your number one important, most, uh, most important asset inside your business. Now, real quick, before I jump into that, if you are a real estate agent, team leader, or brokerage owner, and you are, are not getting the results that you want inside your real estate business, if you are frustrated, if you are not you know, getting the, the, those, again, those results that you're really after, that you know you're capable of going out there and creating, and you're just frustrated and you are stuck, I want to invite you to schedule a 100% zero pressure strategy call with me personally. We're going to jump on a Zoom call and we're going to go through your business. We're going to talk about where your business is at. Currently, what you're doing currently, where your goals are, where your 12 month goals are, what your long term goals are. Again, break down what you're doing currently. And I'm going to give you what my recommended strategy is to get you from where you're at to where you want to go. So if you are stuck, I don't care what level that you are at, 90% of my coaching clients are team leaders and broker owners. And but I also coach, you know, a lot of individual agents in, in, in my, you know, my, my coaching programs, you know, but then from there, okay, my, my real estate company and on my team, you know, obviously in there for 20 years, I've just been helping you know, new agents, part-time agents and, and individual agents go out there and crush it within my own real estate company. And then my coaching is, is more specialized around helping people grow and scale highly successful teams and brokerages, right? So regardless of what level that you're at, I can 100% help you get dialed in. Now, full disclosure on this. Yes, I'm going to spend about maybe five, maybe 10 minutes of that time talking about my coaching program, what it entails and seeing if it's a possible fit for you. However, I've got a very strict, absolute no pressure policy inside my, inside all of my businesses, right? So I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to hard sell you. I operate just, dude, it's, you know, just like on this podcast here, everything's no pressure. You know, um, um, it's my style, right? So if it's for you, great. If not, that's okay too. I'm still going to make sure that this time together is extremely powerful for you. So if you want to schedule that, go to www dot gsdmode.com gsd stands for get shit done name of the podcast gsdmode.com forward slash zoom call because it's going to be a zoom call right you're listening to gsd mode it's a zoom call so i just came up with gsdmode.com forward slash zoom call right so hopefully it's easy to remember and whatever so again do not suffer in silence. There's no reason for it. And don't be afraid to jump on this call because you think you're going to get hard pitch. Like I promise you, that's not going to happen. But I'm going to yeah, spend a couple minutes going through it. For you, great. Not that's okay too. We're going to spend 95% of that time talking about your business and what my recommendation is to get you from where you're at to where you want to go. Okay, so that being said, let's just jump on in. 
All right, so first, before I jump into frequency, right? Like, like when should we be following up? How often should we be following up? I want you to understand what the objective of these calls are. You know, so many people like to operate off of scripts and I get that scripts are good. You know, like I have a lot of scripts too, but I don't rely on them. And why don't I rely on them? Because things go off script very fast. So you need to, you need to understand what the overall objective is. What the objective is just a word for goal. Like what is the overall goal of the call? Right. Um, then from there, I want to understand frameworks. If I understand what the frameworks are, like, okay, I have a deep level understanding of objection handling frameworks, right? Like frameworks that I've designed to handle any objection, doesn't matter what the objection is or what the objection is about, right? I can navigate through that because I understand the goal of every single call that I'm having. I can bring it full circle no matter how off path that call gets because I think shit goes off scripts very, very fast. So if you're reliant on scripts, you are going to sound like a telemarketing robot. People are going to pick up on that and you are going to suck at conversions, right? So, so yeah, scripts are great because it gives us a starting point. Then from there, this is where skill set comes in. You got to have that skill set to go out there and navigate this up. This, so this is what I'm trying to get you dialed in here today is really skill set and process, right? So the goal of any first call, when I say first call, I'm talking about that initial conversation. Right. The, 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 the goal of doing the calls is to have the conversations. Right. So with that initial conversation, my objective is to establish what their timeline is and establish what their goals are. I'm not going out there and trying to build rapport per se in that first call. Look, they, they're they just going to perceive you as a, a salesperson, you know, um, um, you know, right. So like on the subsequent calls after that, my follow up calls after that. Yeah. Now I'm starting to develop rapport. Now, hopefully I can develop rapport by going out there and handling, um, um, you know, these calls correctly, you know, right with that. But, um, you know, conversation number one, it's not about building rapport. It's about getting down to business and identifying what their goal is um, and what their overall timeline is. So let's just say, as an example, I got a Facebook buyer lead coming in, right? Now, what do they all say? Because this is the thing I get from everybody. Like, I mean, you guys hear this all the time too. Like, it doesn't matter what the buyer lead source is, open houses, paper, you know, Google pay-per-click or, you know, Facebook ads or what, what do we hear all the time? Oh, I'm just browsing. Oh, I'm just browsing. I'm just browsing, right? Like, okay, we, we, during the sales process, you always want to be together, never against. Always together, never against, right? So one way to do that is through what's called mirroring, right? So just speak their language because I want to get the, 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 you know, the answers that I want. Now, I don't have time in this podcast to do a deep dive into why all this stuff works so effectively and, you know, the, the kind of, you know, human behavior behind it. Um, um, you know, cause that would take us, you know, a long time to, for me to break all that stuff down. So, but just follow the scripts, right. Or, or just follow the process that I'm sharing with you. Right. Or just take my word for why this shit works. All right. So when I'm, but I'm going to just match what they're saying. So before they tell me I'm just browsing, I'm going to match that. Right. Cause again, the objective is for me to get their timeline and, and find out what their real estate goals are. Right. So, okay. And that's, Hey, you know, like, so once I establish, I'm talking to the right person and whatnot, you know, um, Hey, I know that you're probably just browsing. And not looking to make a move now or anytime in the near future, you know, so just, just hypothetically speaking. And the reason that I'm asking is this just helps me with, with overall business planning uh, reason uh, purposes, you know, but, but it's just hypothetically speaking, you know, if you were to make a move in the future, what, what's, what's your best guesstimate of when that might be six months, one year, two years, three years, again, just hypothetically speaking, like what, what, what's your best guess of when that might be now, again, I don't have time on this podcast here today you know, cause I don't want to make this a two hour podcast here, um, to go into, you know, all the reasoning that that script works so effectively, but the pacing of that, the stutters that you heard there, right. Um, all of that was extremely intentional. I get 99.99999% of people to all give me their timeline, right? So by just saying, I just, brow I know you're just browsing, not looking to make a move now or anytime at all in the near future, right? That lowers down sales resistance because they do not feel like they're being sold. It's all about selling without selling, right? That's what I call it, selling without selling, right? I want to sell to them in a way that they don't feel like they're being sold. So I want to make them feel comfortable. So now they're feeling, okay, hey, like I, they're not threatened, right? So then, okay, we can have a conversation and keep that conversation moving forward. The reason why I said, hey, the reason why I'm asking is look, when you give a reason, um, uh, of, of why you're asking, you know, somebody to give you some information or to do something. Um, even if the reason doesn't make sense, it increases the probability of them doing it by 50%. If the reason is a valid reason, it makes sense in their head, it increases the probably 98%. So that's why I insert that. Yeah. Right. So then I get back to, okay, I get that timeline. Then you want to give them a multiple choice, 
right? So then, okay, I gave them that multiple choice. And they're like, oh, you know, one, one to two years. You know, right? Okay, great. You know, thank you for that, right? Now, just so you guys know, whatever they tell you for a timeline, cut that, cut that in half. That is going to be your true established timeline. So whatever they say, if they tell me one to two years, okay, that to me means six to 12 months. And that'll make sense as we get further here in this podcast. So then from there, now I'm going to transition into, and I got timeline. Now I'm going to transition their goals. You know, okay. Hey, thank you for that. Appreciate that. And you know, with that, with that being said, you know, you know, if you were to make this possible move in the future, you know, what, what, what is most important to you? You know, when, when you do make that move and I find that, you know, when you're buying, buying a new home, there, there's really two components that come to it. You got the home itself, you know, then you got lifestyle outside of, of the home. So maybe, maybe let's start there, you know, with, with, with the lifestyle outside of the home, you know, what, what's really most important to you when it comes to location and those things outside of the home about the area, you know, with your home, like what, like what would you say is most important to you with that? And then I just shut up, let them, oh, well, hey, you know, schools, man, schools are really important to us. We want good schools. Yeah. Hey, I totally get that. Totally understand. That. I got three kids myself and schools are really important to me too. You know, and as parents, you know, sometimes we can identify, you know, differently what good means. You know, so can you kind of, you know, just unpack that a little bit for me? And, you know, what do you mean by good schools? Right. Like, I don't know. Maybe they mean academically, maybe they mean sports. Maybe they mean, hey, I want a conservative school that doesn't have all this woke stuff going on. Like, I don't know. I don't like, okay, I'm going to let them unpack that. Right. The more that I can. And then, so I just keep asking, okay, well, yeah, well, you know, why is that important to you? Okay, cool. Okay, awesome. You know, hey, man, we want, we want to be close to, you know, you know, two hours away from Flagstaff. Okay, well, you know, what, what, what's in Flagstaff? Oh, you know, our, our son's up at NAU and we want to be close to him. Or, hey, man, I love this. I'd love to go snowboard. Okay, great. Yeah. You know, right? Like, I'm able to get more, you know, the, the, the more intel you get about them, the more powerful your follow up's going to be. And this is also rapport building. Even though that's not the core objective of the first call, it's building it. Then I'll go into, okay, like once I've got an idea there, then I'll go into the home itself, right? Um, so then from there, now I've established timeline and their overall goal. This is going to immensely help with overall follow. Now, if they are be, you know, for me at least personally, once I've identified that they're six months out or less, then I get aggressive at going in for the appointment. Aggressive at asking, not aggressive with them about it. Right? You always want to lower sales resistance. You know, so then from there, I'm going to go and ask for the appointment, but in a way that's selling the a value to them, making them feel comfortable, I'm pushing my no pressure policy, letting them know that the sole purpose of the meeting is to provide them with all the information that they need to make the best decision for themselves and their family. You know, regardless of what that decision is, that is okay. You know, um, so I'm just making them feel comfortable. But once we're now for me, six months to them in their head means one year. Right. So whatever they tell you that timeline is cut that in half. That's going to be the realistic timeline. So that is the goal of call number one. Right. The overall objective of that first conversation. Now, every uh, uh, follow up conversation after that. Right. The, the the objective there is number one, to develop and deepen rapport. Right. Get them to know, like, trust you. Right. So that that connectability, that rapport. Right. So I'm going to keep building that, building that, building that, building that. <laughs> right. Um, so develop, develop and <coughs> deepen rapport. Um, and then from there, reinforce. Um, uh, reestablish slash reinforce their timeline and objective. Okay. Hey, la last time we called or last time we talked, you know, you, you were mentioning is about, you know, one to two years out, you, you were thinking from, you know, a uh, uh, possibly making a move in the future. You know, is, is that still sounding about right? Is that still, you know, kind of what your, what your thoughts are on, on overall timeline? Yes. No, you know, whatever. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and then from there, I'm going to transition into, well, Hey, I, you know, I, I know your time's valuable. I don't want to be sending any, anything that doesn't meet your criteria. You know, right now I have X, Y, Z that's important to you that I'm sending you, you know, is, is that still what, what you would be looking for if you possibly do move in the future, you know, or, you know, have, has anything changed, you know, with that again, I just want to make sure I'm sending you homes that do meet your criteria. Yeah, right. And this is again, I'm not, I know I'm using buyer and a buyer example here, but this is the same with seller, buyer, doesn't matter, or agent recruit for those, you know, if you're like me and your 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 role in your organization is to recruit agents, you know, it, it, it's all the same process, right? Um, so that is the goal of the follow-up process, right? That can you know to, to reinforce that. And then again, once they're at six months or less from wanting to make a move, that's when I start getting aggressive with going out there and setting those appointments. Okay, so then from there, there's going to be two overall um, frequencies here. Well, actually, there's going to be there's going to be four, right? Um, so, but but two kind of you know when I so we got your timeline established, and then we got your no timeline established, and then when timeline's established, I'm going to walk you through three frequencies there. So these are when you're going to be doing your follow up calls. Now, as far as okay, there's a new lead that you have coming in. 
or if it's an expired or FISBO or a prospecting call, right? Like this is just a, you know somebody that we're trying to get a hold of that we have not had a conversation with yet. Okay, I'm going to reach out to them day one. This is my frequency. Day one, then every other day for the first 14 days and every 21 days for the first year. That is the frequency, right? Um, and that is in place until I have that conversation. I've established their goals. I've established their timeline that we've already talked about. Then from there, I'm going to have my timeline established. Now, under six months is going to be me following up with them every 30 days. Now, remember, if it's six months or less, that means that they told me double that time frame. So every 30 days at a minimum is going to be, you know, I found that to be a great frequency for these. Now, if they're six to 12 months, now that means to them, they told me one to two years, right, in, in their timeline. That's going to be following up with them every 45 days. Now, if they told me one plus, or if, 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 if then I got one plus year out, right? That would be them telling me two plus years. Then I'm following up every 180 days. Now, as they get closer, you know, maybe they told me, you know, uh, one to two years, or I'm sorry, two plus years, right? So now I'm following up with them every 180 days. Well, now once they get down to that, you know, one, you know, one year mark or whatever, now I'm following up and I change it to where it's calling every 45 days, right? So that is the frequency. The fortune is in the follow-up. So now you know those frequencies. Now you know the objective of the overall calls. Of course, you got to know what to say on those calls and how to say it and how to transition into the setting appointments and all of that stuff. That's just really important. So make sure that you understand that because it's not just it's not just about doing the calls and getting them on the phone. Extremely, extremely important. But most important is you got to know what to say, how to say it, when to say it, and how to navigate those overall conversations. If you don't get that right, you can do phone calls all day long, every day for the next 10 years of your life and get shitty results, right? So we don't want that, right? So make sure that you're dialing that stuff in. Um, and again, if you don't have that stuff dialed in, you can schedule a 100% zero pressure strategy call with me personally, gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call, www.gsdmode.com forward slash zoom call as we talked about earlier. Okay. Now I want to talk to you about process. So now we talk, I mean, that was the process, right? But then how do we keep all of this together? You know, um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to actually share my screen. Now I'm going to explain this because I know most of you are driving down the road. You're at the gym, you're listening to this, but then there's some of you watching this, you know, whether you're streaming this, watching this on Facebook or Instagram or, or, or YouTube, um, wherever you're at, I want to make like, for those of you that are watching the visual, I want you to see the visual of this. Cause I want to let you see how I have this set up in my CRM. Cause all of this stuff is good. Then we need to know, well, man, how do I set this up? Cause like, you're not going to remember this shit. You need to make it where it's inside your CRM. You just press a damn button. And now it's just telling you what to do. You don't have to think about it. Like, I don't have to think about this stuff. Every day, my CRM tells me who I got to call, when I got to call them. I don't have to think about it. Just log in there, click on my daily tasks. Boom. It just tells me who I got to call. I do not have to think about it. So what I want to do here is I'm going to share my screen. So then this way, um, you guys can see what this looks like in the back end of my CRM. Okay. So um, I'm on my, here's my Perfect Storm website here. Let me log into or go into my CRM. Uh-oh. Okay. Sorry. I don't know if you guys saw that black screen, but I saw a black screen there for a second. Okay. So then if I go into, I'm just in a demo CRM here. So um, if I go here into uh, my drip campaigns, because this is where we're going to set these up is inside your drip campaigns. Now, if you do happen to have perfect storm, all these are going to be pre-built into your system, right? And I can help you set all of these up so that we don't have to, like they're all pre-built in under here into the global drips. Um, um, but when you come into here and then you just copy the ones that you need and we can set these up for you. So then you don't have to create these. Right. Um, but if you don't have perfect storm, um, uh, I want to just walk you through these. Okay. So you can see here, so I'm going to highlight these, right? So if we look at, these are buyers. And then I also have these down here for, um, I've got so many in my, I got so many different detours and whatever. You can also see, I've got all the sellers, right? So whether it's seller, buyer, you know, um, with that, you know, past clients, like even, even with my past clients, same thing, right? Okay. I get a past client. I click a button. It's going to remind me to call them when I need to call them for the next 20 years to go out there and maximize on repeat referral business. So I don't have to think about it, but we're not going to get into that today. Cause I just want to cover right now. We're talking about, you know, those initial calls and follow-up calls. Okay. Every lead that I initially put in my CRM, whether again, it doesn't matter if it expired, FISBO, you know, uh, 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 you know, you name it or Facebook or Zillow or whatever, 
everybody's going to start off on this no time frame established call tasking drip. This, so this is telling my system to automatically task me um, day one, then every other day for the first 14 days and every 21 days for the next year. So I can just go on my daily task queue and then boom, it's telling me who I got to call when I got to call them. So how I set these up is I just come in here and it's just like, okay, hey, initial lead setup, you know, and then here's call one, here's call two, here's call three, here's call four. Oops, I'm in the wrong one. That's a sign call. Um, um, I got, got them all. So I get, so I got them for everything, dude, right? Like I got a drip for, you know, a, a, a deal for everything, right? So, okay. Um, why does that keep taking me into, oh, cause I'm on the sign call. All right. So then, um, let's just say I come here into, you know, third party, this, like these are the third party, um, buyer lead would be like what I use for like, you know, um, Zillow realtor.com. Right. So my initial call, it's going to task me immediately to call this person. And then I put in here, like, you know, I like to be able to just eliminate the guesswork. So I know exactly if they answer, say this, they don't answer, say this. So I know what to do. Then it's going to tell the system, tell me, okay, two days later, automatically task me to then do call two. Then two days later, automatically task me to call three. Then it's going to two days later, task me to call four and so forth all the way through, right? Then every 21 days. So this maps it out for the full year, right? So then this way we don't forget, right? Then, okay, I'm going to build one out for my six to 12 months. You know, right? And then my my under six months, my six to twelve months, and my one plus year out. Now, what I also want you to think about is detours, right? So, okay, let's just say I set an appointment with a buyer or seller, and they no show me. Okay, well now I just got to click a button in my CRM. This is going to be a twenty six day twelve touch, so it's going to shoot them twelve emails automatic or six emails automatically. It's going to automatically task me six times over the next twenty six days to then reset that appointment. You know, um, or if I go on that listing appointment, let's just say, and they don't sign for whatever reason, maybe they're interviewing other agents, like you're not going to win them all, right? As good as you think you are, as good as I think I am, you know, whatever, even though, you know, I've been involved in over 7,000 home sales and become one of the top realtors and team leaders on the planet, you know, I will be the first to admit, man, I do not convert them all. Like, okay, listing appointments, I might convert 92% of them, but I got 8% of my don't convert. And some of those, it's just, maybe it's not time to list. Sometimes, you know, the price out of, out of time, there's sometimes they just, they, they, they are, you know, ready to rock and roll. They just for whatever reason, choose somebody else. Like you're not going to get a hundred percent, you know, uh, 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 you're not going to have a hundred percent batting average. Right. So then from there though, okay, what happens in that situation? And well, now I just click a button, you know? Um, so when I go into a lead, right, once all these drips are set up and again, this is just a demo CRM. So I'm just kind of showing you dummy leads here. Um, uh, I can't go in in my CRM and show you, um, uh, you know, my actual leads, but if I come in here, okay, like right now you can see this open house lead. Um, they are in, um, um, well, I got a past client. So, um, so if I come here to your drip plans here, so I just, I, again, this is a demo serum. So I was just showing somebody how to set up a past client. So if I come here to add plan, all I got to do is come in here and add. So let's just say I, you know, was on the phone with this buyer established that their timeline was six to 12 months out. Bam. I just click that. And then now my, like it, it's automatically tasking me to now call them every 45 days. I don't need to think about it. So then I can just come into my CRM here. I can just click on my daily tasks and then boom, it's going to show a list of everybody I have a task on. I just go into the first person. I look at what my task view is over here. Um, see what that task is. Come in here, click on the description, see what it is, see what I got to do, complete it, then boom, go to the next, right? So it makes it so efficient and easy, you know, to go out there and pull this off. So this becomes really, really important, you guys. Like you leverage, you got to leverage your, your CRM, man. Your CRM, I'm telling you right now, is the most important tool, and the most important asset inside your overall business. The vast majority of this industry, though, just never, they don't understand that. They don't take the time to learn it. They don't take the time to set it up correctly. Like when you go buy a CRM, and I don't care what CRM that you get, it could be the cream of the crop, whatever, whatever it is. You know, it, it's kind of like if you go join a gym. Um, okay. Like you can go join the sickest gym in your area. The most expensive gym has the sickest equipment out there. Well, well, there's two things that need to happen. You know, right. Number one, you got to get your ass in the door. So you got to jump in there and use it and use it consistently. Right. Otherwise you're not going to get good results. Then from there, like you can still jump in there consistently, you know? Um, um, but if you don't take the time to understand how to use it properly, you're not going to get those results either. So you got to make sure that you have the right strategy and then that you're jumping in there and using it. So you got to, you know, like your CRM is only going to be as good as the strategies that you feed it 
right? And then obviously that consistency that you're jumping in there and that you're, you're working it, right? So that becomes really important, but that will help keep all of this together because you just want to eliminate that thought, eliminate that guesswork. What do I do? When do I do it? Dude, I just want, system just tells me every day, you know, like who, what I got to do, who I got to do it on, right? So I don't have to think about it. I just get in there and do it. That way I can save my brain juice so I don't get, you know, fall into decision fatigue. You know, I can save my brain juice for putting big deals together, you know, and, and all of that. And those of you that have teams and brokerages, you know, right, that, that are supporting your agents, you got to make sure your agents are dialed in on this shit. You know, like I got to make sure that my agents have the right systems, have the right support. They know what to do, when to do, how to do it, what to say. Like it's our responsibility and job to make sure that our agents are armed to go out there and create success. I can't tell you how many team leaders and broker owners I have conversations with on a weekly basis. They're like, oh, you know, they start pitching them on, oh, my agents aren't producing. I'm like, okay, like, well, well, what are you doing to support them? We start breaking this stuff down. And then they don't even know how to use their own internal systems that they're paying for to go out there and provide their agents. I'm like, okay, well, maybe, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's kind of, you know, part of the, part of the problem. Maybe that's, you know, problem number one, you know, right. Um, uh, or, or, you know, whatever it may be, like, if you're not arming them with the shit that they need to be successful, you know, okay. Like if you're going to go, I don't know, send your soldiers into war, we got to make sure that they have the equipment and the tools necessary to go out there and, and be victorious in that battle. Right. So I'm not going to go out there and, and send my agents, you know, out there to go out there, you know, and fight this metaphorical battle, you know, um, if they are armed correctly to go out there and be victorious. Right. Um, so we got to make sure they have the right strategies, the right systems, the right training, the right equipment, all of that stuff. Now you can go check out perfectstormdemo.com if you don't have this stuff in place. And and you know, I'm not this isn't like a, a video for a promo of, of the system. I can just only demonstrate the systems that I have. Um, but, uh, um, you know, it's a great system. It's one that I use, the one that I have. I'm the owner of it. I've, I've created it for a reason, the way that I've created all my shits in there. Every one of my follow-up campaigns, all that stuff's in there. You know, we'll make sure that your design, make sure that you're set up if that's something that you want. Right. Um, um, so you could check that out there. Um, but overall, as we, as we start recapping this, right, like make sure that you understand, here's what's important is make sure that you understand because this is, this is, this comes up a lot, right. Of, of, cause this is where burnout's going to kick in. All right, if you are if you are generating all these leads and you're putting in the work each and every day, but you are not getting wins, okay, you are going to get burnout. It's going to get frustrated. You're going to like do like you're just you're just running into a fucking wall all day, over, 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 repeat. Yeah, you know, right. Like you got to make sure that that you have the right strategy and you have the right understanding of again. It's it's not so much of just doing the action. It's how am I doing the action that is going to get you the result that you want, right? So we got to understand what that objective is on that initial call. What that objective is on on each you know follow up call from there, we got to make sure that we have our process dialed in, that we are following that process, and if you do that, you will go out there and convert these at a very very high level. All right, so as we wrap up here again, if you are struggling, if you're a realtor, team leader, or brokerage owner that is driven, look, if you're not driven, if you're unmotivated, if you're not willing to do the work, I can't help you. Nobody can help you. You probably, and I'm not saying this to sound like a dick, but like, look, th this business isn't for everybody. Like, if you can't get out of bed, if you're not willing to put in the work, like, probably should do you and your family a favor and just, like, go find, you know, something that does work for you because this industry, like, you're not going to create success in this industry. But if you are driven, you got big goals and you want to go out there and create those goals into a reality, but you don't know how to, you've been trying it maybe for years, maybe your business is, is, you know, stagnant or going down or not growing at the rate that you want, and you want to make sure that you you go out there and, hit your goals and grow into the full potential. You know that you're capable of greatness. You just don't know exactly how to get from where you're at to where you want to go. I highly encourage you and I invite you to schedule a strategy call with me personally. It's going to be an hour long call. We're going to jump on Zoom. We're going to look at your business. You're going to be asked some questions ahead of time. I'm going to ask you, you know, how long you've been doing this, what your current production is right now, what, what uh, you want your 12 month production to be, what your current biggest obstacles are. So I'm going to ask you some questions and the, you know, the more truthful that you can be on those, the more that I can help you when we jump onto this call. Um, then from there, we're going to break down your business. We're going to spend 95% of this call breaking down your business. What are you currently doing? Uh, um, uh, what's working for you? What's not working for you? What those obstacles are. And then I'm going to just walk you through what exactly my recommendation is to get you from where you're at to where you want to go. And then, as I mentioned, because I don't want any surprises here, and I'm all about, you know, being upfront, full disclosure. Yes, I'm going to spend about five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, max, no more than 10 minutes, but maybe five minutes, depends on how, if you have questions, walking you through what my coaching program entails, seeing if it's a possible fit for you. If it is great, if not, hey, that's okay too. I'm still going to make sure that this call is powerful as hell for you, right? You got nothing to lose, everything to gain, nothing to lose. You know, I just had a call today with somebody and the dude's like, I don't know why I waited so long for this call. 
yeah, right. He's been listening to the podcast for years. I don't know why I waited so long. Like, well, don't hesitate, man. If you are stuck, if you need help, like you got to learn to ask for help. And I think that, you know, as, as entrepreneurs, it, we've, we've got to have an element of, of being self-reliant and that's a good thing. But the, the negative of that is then we get to a point where we then have a difficult time asking for help. Right. So if you need that help, let's just, let's just have this conversation, man. I'll help you. I'll show you, you know, walk you through exactly what to, you know, what, what to get you dialed in. Now, if I can't solve your problem, I'll be very clear and upfront with that too. It's not, it's not happened yet. I've never had a conversation with somebody that I haven't been able to, you know, walk them through the, you know, where they're at to where they want to go. Um, um, you know, but you know, I'll be upfront honest with you on that, you know? So if you want to schedule that www.gsdmode.com forward slash zoom call, um, and we'll get you dialed in. Or if you scroll below, if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this, there'll be a link below for that too. All right, you guys, keep crushing it. Keep up the amazing work. Keep getting ass. And I will see you next time. Peace.